Hello all, it's the 14th of February 2018, here with Dan in Essex UK down the allotment. It's about 6 degrees Celsius today, which is about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So relatively chilly, although it could be colder. It really is an icy wind, rather crisp, and there's meant to be some rain later. Nobody else down here at the allotment, and uh, I can't say I particularly blame people. It's not uh, the most inviting weather to work in, but I thought I'd come down here and have a look and see what's going on. And I'm looking up in the silver birch tree up there, and I can see a pigeon just uh, resting himself up there. Let's uh, pause and have a look, shall we? Look at him up there, look. Just resting away. You can see him up my finger. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Just on top of my finger, there he is. Casually just sitting on top of a branch, chilling out. Not feeling as cold as we probably are at the moment. Amazing when you think about these animals, isn't it? So looking around down here, there's lots of things coming on. So not too far away from the spring now, hopefully. So we're sort of halfway through February and March, anything can happen with regards to weather here in the UK. They say you can get the best or the worst of the weather here in the UK at that time of year. I remember some marches have been very warm and people have been down the beach and other times it's been rather chilly indeed. So I have to see what happens. But things are underway here and you can see we've got the kale here, you know, still producing. And I've spoken a lot about the merits of growing kale in the past. These were interesting last summer. This one here has obviously had something at it, but this one here hasn't. And you listen to the thing, this beautiful nutrition. These are one of the best things. If you're going to just grow a brassica, I really recommend kale because it doesn't take up that much space and yet they, it crops prolifically. If you keep picking it, it will generally keep producing. Of course, in the warmer weather, it will produce much quicker and you need to ensure you protect it from the cabbage white butterfly. I've spoke a lot about this in the past and when they're small you need to protect them from birds so that's what you must do. But if you check out some of my videos from last summer, I did a video last summer on how not to grow brassicas and I showed you where which my brassicas basically got absolutely massacred by cabbage white butterflies but then they did recover so you might want to check that out. So here we go. Now, broad beans. Now, Broad beans are a great thing to grow because they tend to come before you get your runner beans and they're really nice taste and um, many dishes that they can go in and I just love them. And when the pods are small you can eat the pods and then if you let them mature you then eat the beans inside. And of course one good thing about broad beans is you can save the seeds for the following year and grow on again. So that's a very good thing to do. So let's have a look here. Now, These would have been in put in in November time, late October, early November, and it's nice, I think, in a way to have something in the ground, in the rain, over the winter period, because then you can have a look around. You think, oh yeah, there's something growing, and the tail is, if you put them in early, they, you'll get the crop before the black fly comes, which can decimate a crop. Whether that's true or not, who knows, but um, some people there's merits into it and some people say that uh, it is indeed an old wives tale so I'll let you guys decide on that one and with regards to growing broad beans I have found that growing dwarf ones can be very good because the plants tend to get rather large then they don't tend to fall over and snap and make the place look untidy etc. So dwarf ones are good. I believe, please, please correct me, if it's only an exhibition, that might be a dwarf variety. But have a look and certainly worth looking into. Garlic over here. Garlic a great thing. Many of us know about the nutritional benefits of garlic and great in curries and certainly a very nutritious crop and very versatile to grow and very hardy here in the UK climate. Got a bit more there as well. And when they're small you have to be careful because um, the birds tend to, they can pull them out, they think they're worms. So you might want to cover them up with something such as this wire mesh here just to stop the birds getting in and pulling them out. The same as you would do 
with leets. So over here, not a particularly impressive brassica bed, but we're not going to go into that too much. Rhubarb. Now, rhubarb is within here, and you can see it's starting to come up here. You can see it's starting to come up here, and it will be, hopefully soon, this is probably a later variety, starting to come up here. Now, rhubarb really is a worthwhile thing to grow, and several reasons for this. Of course, there's lots of dishes. Rhubarb and apple crumble is one great thing. Rhubarb and custard, etc. Rhubarb and apple pie, you get a good hearty, sort of traditional English um, desserts, if you want to call it that. So, very nice. And a good thing, let's just go over to more rhubarb. Another good thing about rhubarb is of course you it tends to start cropping relatively early in the season about march time of course it's weather permitting but a great thing is is there's not generally that much sort of fruit available in march time now i don't know if uh, veg if rhubarb is classed as a fruit or a vegetable but uh, you know we tend to treat it as a fruit don't we you know you think of it as i stated before in desserts etc and uh, i believe there's even rhubarb tea now which i found very nice but it won't be long and there's all these crowns here there's one two three four five six seven eight nine about 12 to 15 um sort of rhubarb patches if you will and there's many crowns here and you know it's really a nutritious and a great crop to grow and it doesn't Require too much attention. So, if you want a long cropping fruit or fruit veg, whatever that starts early in the season, I would recommend this very much. And what swedes look now? These swedes are looking great, great dish. We all like a bit of mashed swede, don't we? Look at that swede, excellent. And again, totally hardy here in the UK, of course, with regards to whatever you're going to grow, you need to ensure that it'll ideally thrive in the climate in which you're going to grow it. For example, there'll be no good the uh, sticking, shall we say, sticking a banana tree in the middle of this allotment and expecting it to, uh, you know, produce bananas. Of course, it has been done in the UK, and if you're interested, type into Google bananas in Ardley. That's A-R-D-L-E-I-G-H, and you may see a lady who managed to produce bananas in the UK, but generally, you know, you want to be looking at growing stuff that's going to thrive if you want to you know, lots of success because we all like a bit of success. Of course, there is room for a bit of novelty growing. As my long-term viewers know, I do indeed grow a lot of stuff from novelty, things like watermelons and stuff. I generally ensure that I've got a lot of, you know, traditional UK varieties of crops growing, so I do get a good crop. You know, because you don't want to be spending too much time on growing the exotic and they're not getting any sort of uh, produce from it. Swiss chard great thing to grow Let's see what else we've got oh yes we've got some more swiss chard over here it's a nice good crop and i found that uh, with regards to growing swiss chard it doesn't generally get massacred by the uh, cabbage white butterflies as much so i'm thinking of things to start growing and i'm thinking of putting some spinach in probably put it inside in my windowsill propagators or indeed some pots on some windowsills to get them going because they won't uh, generally germinate at this time of year but I want to grow a lot of spinach this year what I want to try to do is to grow a lot of lower maintenance crops which you know perpetual stuff stuff that keeps coming as you pick it because uh, that way you tend to get a, a large crop and as I stated before lower maintenance and we've got some cabbages here look at that nice little cabbage coming on there that could be picked and eaten, that. And this is a nice variety of kale, a curlier variety. I believe this is Nero di Toscana, probably, and this might be Bates Blue Curled Kale. There's all different varieties that uh, you can look into, and there's one called Tree Kale as well. So, look at your varieties now. Now, obviously, as I look around this allotment, there's really not a lot of... Uh, things going on at the moment so you're not down here weeding as much so this is the time of year where you really start planning and thinking for the next year you know you start getting your maybe getting your pots ready for setting your your plants in your seeds you start thinking about where you're going to put stuff your crop rotation etc because before we know it the spring will be on us and um, things will be growing very quickly and you don't want to be standing there with your trousers down so to speak so I think you guys get the idea of what I'm saying 
hope you enjoyed this video and spring will be here soon i hope take care speak soon